Hey, and welcome back to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. My name is Heather. I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009, and on this channel, I put extra episodes, extra content, as well as the full episodes of all of my shows. So today, we are going to talk about Elizabeth I's working holiday in Kenilworth. So it's not much of a secret that Elizabeth I and Robert Dudley had like a thing going on. He was probably her one true love. And in 1575, Elizabeth was on one of her summer progresses through the Midlands, and she visited Dudley at his home in Kenilworth Castle. They spent 19 days. He was wooing her in spectacular fashion, almost three weeks of pageants, festivals, music, theater. It would have been the ultimate in Elizabethan entertainment. The pageantry was a huge effort to win her heart. It was like his major last ditch effort to try to convince her to marry him. So, of course, Dudley was an interesting character. His family fell from grace when his father fought to put the Protestant Lady Jane Grey on the throne rather than Mary Tudor, who was a Catholic, after Edward VI died young. But after Mary died and Elizabeth became the queen, she actually rewarded Dudley and he became one of the largest landowners in the country. He worked with William Cecil, Francis Walsingham in advising the queen, and they were very obviously more than friends. And then, of course, there was the big history's mystery about what happened to Dudley's wife, Amy Robsart. She fell down a flight of stairs. She died. I did a history's mystery video on that several months ago. Rumors hounded Dudley that he had killed his wife so that he could be free to marry Elizabeth. And those rumors would stick with him through the rest of his life. So if you want to actually dig deep into who potentially killed Amy Robsart, check out that video. I will link to it on the history's mystery about how she died. For 18 years, he didn't actually remarry, keeping himself available in case the queen did decide to choose him. But, of course, Elizabeth wasn't going to be able to marry a commoner in England, even a noble person. She wasn't going to be able to marry somebody like that. It would have been way too political. And he finally did tie the knot in 1578. His new wife was banished from court. Such was Elizabeth's fury. The ultimate problem in their love affair was that she was queen. She would never be completely free to follow her heart. A marriage to Dudley would be political, and with the rumors still swirling around that he had killed his wife, it was simply impossible. Elizabeth knew it, but she was still jealous of any woman who eventually became his wife. But in 1575, Dudley still nurtured hopes of winning Elizabeth's hand in marriage, and he staged this elaborate three-week festival that was his last ditch to impress her. Her time was completely filled up with all of her favorite passions, elaborately choreographed. There was dancing, riding, hunting, as well as public festivals and pageants. The cost was staggering, well over a thousand pounds a day. It was a scale never before seen in England. There was one where a mechanical dolphin rose out of the water and concealed within were musicians and a singer inside this mechanical dolphin. There were huge fireworks displays. There were new gardens with fountains built, and Elizabeth stayed in the new state apartments that Lester had built. One very interesting thing about this is that one of the people who was involved in planning, most likely, would have been William Shakespeare's father, because Stratford-upon-Avon was very close. He had a position in town there that he probably would have been involved with this. So it's tantalizing to think that young William Shakespeare, who was just a child at the time, would have potentially seen these pageants and, you know, who knows how he would have been influenced by them, right? Of course, Dudley was unsuccessful in his quest to win Elizabeth, but the festival that he created was the talk of the Elizabethan world for some time. There are a few contemporary descriptions that give us an idea of what the experience would have been like. One was from poet and actor George Gascioni, whose book The Princely Pleasures at the Court of Kenilworth from 1576 gathered together the scripts that he and others had written for the dramatic entertainments performed for Elizabeth, complete with stage directions. The second was an account of the revels published in 1575 in the form of a privately printed letter. 
wherein part of the entertainment unto the Queen's Majesty at Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire, in this summer's progress, 1575, is signified from a friend officer in attendance in the court unto his friend, a citizen and merchant of London. And it reads, the author of this letter, the officer in attendance in the court, identifies himself as Robert Lanham, and he tells us that he gained access to the private garden one day when the garden door was open and Her Highness out hunting. The letter goes on to give a very detailed account of the garden, so precise that it includes dimensions of the flower beds and the garden's crowning glory, a great fountain of rich and hard white marble raised on a four-foot-high platform in which a pair of Atlantis supports a globe from which water pours out of spouts onto a basin filled with fish, the eight sides of which are carved with erotic scenes from Ovid's Metamorphosis. The author notes that those whose passions are inflamed by viewing these scenes are likely to find their ardor doused by the fountain, which spurted with such vehemency as to moisten them from top to toe. Elizabeth's long vacation at Kenilworth would ignite imaginations for centuries. One of Arthur Sullivan's earliest choral works, Sullivan of Gilbert and Sullivan, Pirates of Penzance, all of that kind of fame, was actually called Kenilworth, and the libretto is based on the novel of the same name by Sir Walter Scott. Shakespeare biographies, like I said, also love to speculate on how much the young William would have experienced the public pageants and masks. He lived 14 miles away, and his father was likely involved in the planning. Dudley didn't succeed in winning Elizabeth in marriage, but he may have succeeded in inspiring the imagination of the boy who would become the world's greatest playwright. And maybe that made it all worth it. I'm not sure. So, hey, if you made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed it, I would appreciate you hitting that like button. And I hope I earned your subscription to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. I so appreciate you. You are loved and appreciated. I'm glad I share the planet with you. And hey, don't forget to drink your water. Okay, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.